They say generals are always fighting the previous war, and uh, software architects are no different, so you can see what problems I'm working on by the talks I'm giving in any given week or month. Uh, this one's really about <clears throat> figuring out who owns, as data is pushed from produ producing systems to reporting and analytical and third parties, <clears throat> what schemas do we use? And who has ownership of that? And where is that data located? And how do we transform it and why? So I'm actually gonna propose a target state for data that <clears throat> comes from producing data producing systems. We wanna put it in our data lake. Then we want it to make it usable by other systems. And then we may also wanna make it usable by humans or by reporting uh, people doing data analytics or machine learning. So this is sort of the <clears throat> pipeline that I'm looking at and the far right column is empty. I'll talk about it a little later. So across the top, we have who, what, how is the schema oriented? Is it a producer oriented schema? Meaning it's the data, the way the producer had it, irrespective of how it will be consumed by other people. <clears throat> the far right is the consumer driven schema. It's consumer oriented schema. We don't care what it looked like in the production system. We want it to be in a format that is optimized for our use cases uh, outside of the production system. And the middle one, uh, it strikes me that there's a data engineering or corporate standards or compliance version. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Across the bottom, <clears throat> we've got where the data is located. So the data starts out in an application and it's owned by the application team and it's in the producer format. Then it moves to the lake, or if you have a warehouse, it'll move to that. Um, and then it fans that. Now this ignores web endpoints. This is really about big data movement or streaming data movement. Uh, then it moves to a lake or a legacy warehouse. And then finally it moves into the analytic space and potentially it is made available to end users and reports or through some other mechanism. <clears throat> so we start on the far left and it's the operational model. That's the application data model that's owned by the producer. That data is extracted and sent to the lake or basically to the data hub. And that, uh, and it's raw extracted, right? It's just some image of the data in the producing database. It is not potentially not consumable by anybody. It could be a bunch of JSON graphs. It could be a bunch of hierarchical documents, which is what I should have said. It could be some weird table format that's custom to that data store. So generally speaking, we may have a situation where we have a producer-oriented model in the lake in a raw format. <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is we need to make it kind of, we generally, what we want to do is make it conform to a standard. Now, this step is skipped in a lot of companies and I'll have other diagrams of that, but this is target state. So the target state is that we create a common company conformed model where it's the company data model. Uh, another option is just to be some highly normalized version. So if stuff came out of, of originating system in document format, like I got all the uh, charges for a room stay along with all the billing in a single document at a hotel. Um, what we do is we take that and we convert it into not necessarily a reporting friendly format, but a reporting style database friendly format. And so that might be normalized, <clears throat> highly normalized. Another option now that some people use is something like a data vault too. It's a little bit different. It's a hub and spoke model. So really what happens is we take data from the producer model and we convert it into the data engineering model. And it sits in the lake in the data engineering model. There's an extra box at the bottom here, which is reference data. And so that may already be preloaded into the lake. And the reason we do that is to create consumer supportable, consumer friendly models, we need to enrich the data with like type codes or something else, some other behavior, some other kinds of uh, textual strings, those kinds of things, they need to be dropped into the consumer model to make it easy for consumption. So the next phase is we go through a transformation phase where we may just denormalize the normalized view or we may take the conform model and convert it to a format that is easy to present or it's easy to load into a reporting system. Uh, a couple of these show where we have uh, combining two conformed or normalized models into a presentation. So I take the customer records, the general customer profile, and I take their room history for this uh, couple trips and I combine them together into a single table for a specific report or for a specific set of reports. Because in the third column, we really would like reusable 
presentation models that can be used for different reports. <clears throat> and then the last one, we basically combine reference data with some others and we do binning and some other stuff and we convert that into a machine learning feature that's usable by several different models. So I would argue this is the target state that you're shooting for uh, when you're building a new data system. So if you move from on-prem to the cloud or you buy another company and you need to merge systems, I would actually argue that this is probably the model you're looking for. Okay. So where are people currently broke? And let me see if there's anything in here. Right. So we know what's in producers. We know some of the models are really oriented towards consumption. Um, the last thing is sort of this piece that I covered before, which is I can think of three different data engineering models. One is the, just something that's mechanically denormalized to a million tables. Another one would be sort of mechanically denormalized, but except to a data vault format or a corporate data model standard. I actually find the last one the hardest because I, if you have a big company, there's a lot of standards. You got standards are great because you got a million of them. <clears throat> so it's be one of those. So then like if this was our target state, what are the most common current states? So this one, you see this a lot. Nobody wants to build the data engineering pipeline stuff because there's no shared tech team. So they will take the raw producer model and either make it directly visible to the consumers and or they will create a couple, take a couple raw consumption models and take the producer model and convert it to a presentation model. So that actually can kind of work um, pretty well. You just skip a step of creating the conformed or the normalized or the data vault model. The downside is you kind of can have these tight couplings between the producer data model and the consumption data model because you don't have an intermediate state, right? And if you need to combine multiple disparate inputs that have different formats for similar data. There's no single format for those, and you'd have to build translators for each one of those uh, to load into your data set. <clears throat> now, the arrows are still the same here. We kept all the, is it producer or consumer oriented, right? So in this case, we go straight from producer, skip the data engineering model, except for reference tables, and then put it in the consumption model. Um, you see a lot of places that have this. Uh, it's like current state. If you're in a startup, it especially makes sense you're going to do as much as you can to get customers and as little as possible overhead. Uh, but when you're in a regulatory, regulated business or you get large enough, then this actually gets super expensive and it gets confusing because um, the operational teams suddenly have to be really aware of all the downstream consumption or they break it, which is still a possibility in the other model. Um, but everybody knows what they're doing. So if they make some decision that doesn't make sense for the rest of the company, then everybody sees it and everybody has to live with it. All right, the other one, <clears throat> which you see a lot, is this version. And this is kind of a similar to the previous one. In this case, though, because we don't have any infrastructure, we have no data engineering, no warehouse versions of the presentation models, or not very many, we do end user models. And in those cases, people will build reporting models for a specific report. They'll build some analytic job that generates a data set that's only used in one report, and then they'll create a report for that. Um, this one, you can really lose control of your data because um, sometimes people will do that in Excel. And I'm not a banging on Excel. I'm just saying they'll do end user computing and they will put that data uh, transformation somewhere you can't see it. And then the data will actually reside somewhere that may not <clears throat> be protected with the normal controls in the ecosystem. So. Uh, this one, I to me, is some in some cases is a catastrophe and a data loss waiting to happen, but it is very common, right? This one and the one before it are super common. The target state that we're looking for is to find some way to come up with taking our data, putting it in some normalized or standard format, but it doesn't have to be a single standard. It just needs a single model standard. It's just got to be in a way that everybody knows how to get to it. And then we can create presentation views off of that in the lake or in the analytics stores. And then we can use that data. And the advantage of this is we get a little bit of decoupling uh, between the producer and the consumer model. And we also can, can, can combine multiple data engineering models into a single consumer. Uh, and because they're kind of similar in format, it makes that consumption easier for combining across business lines. So that's it. I hope that's useful. Uh, leave feedback like usual. Bye.